If you understand this, you will know that you have been given the power that transforms people. Where did you keep the reality of that life? It's not just by bragging and saying, I'm a man of God, I'm an apostle. No, great is the mystery of godliness. God lives in me. It is true. Brothers and sisters, find a way of believing this. God lives in me. It was not so when I was born because I was not born saved but somewhere around the story of my life I encountered him Jesus who is the son of the living God today he lives in me and I believe there are implications to this my life cannot be natural again everything I'm about my life has to carry that signature not just for the gratification of the flesh but the revelation of Jesus so when someone comes to me and says apostle nothing is working in my life from pillar to post my life is empty what do you think I should do when I see such a person I am happy that you have met me because I am a blessing to you I can't be a cause me and Jesus can't fail together me alone can fail I agree he will never fail but since he has decided that this partnership is a salt covenant inseparable Two of us cannot fail together. You carry this mentality. When you get into an office, you enter not as an employee, you enter as an ark. You have been entering as one who was employed, who is being paid X amount of naira or dollars or pounds. That is the reason why you go through the limitation that comes with that system. But when you know that beyond salary, I am a blessing. Doors that has been trying, the company has tried and tried to get those doors open. Suddenly, when God wants to bless that company, he gives them the privilege of employing you. When you enter that office, you don't have to tell them you have come. The manager returns back and says, how many staff do we have? Oh, 26, now 27. Who was the last person employed? And they said, one, one gentleman like that. Okay. I've noticed in the last one week, something has happened here. Something supernatural has happened. Have you noticed the kind of favor have you noticed that stealing has reduced in this company just because the man was there all the three thieves that used to steal they were caught red-handed people who have been stealing for five years nobody catching them with all the charms that they had an ark just came please hear what i'm telling you i'm teaching you truth from scripture you are not just an employee no you are not just a business partner what you are bringing is more than capital what you are bringing is the presence divinity the supernatural they bring you into a ministry as a pastor you are not just one of the 30 pastors no with all due respect every other person can believe what they believe but you know there is an implication I'm sharing with you my mindset. I'm sharing with you my beliefs. The mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness. Your life becomes an effulgence of signs and of wonders. Your life becomes a, a marvel first to you. Not because you are anything special in yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you, these are not just, these are not cunningly devised fables. These are truths that are provable. God can live in a man. You can have something you were not born with. You can have something that was not given to you in a university. You can have something that was not given to you in your nation. 
the reality of the life of God at work in a human spirit. Listen, please hear me. Listen to me. Our fathers of faith, men like T.L. Osborne, men like R.W. Shambach, these men and women carried this revelation. They came to Africa. They shifted climate with power and with grace. Ordinary men, mighty God. Ordinary men, powerful God. Ordinary men, all wise God. Ordinary men, El Shaddai. I can tell you why people continue to dishonor the Lord. Because our cities, and respectfully speaking, our churches are losing the supernatural element. There's all kinds of cunningly divine fab device fables, manipulations of darkness. The sick remain sick, the oppressed remain oppressed. All kinds of stories. Hear me. Now, please listen. In addition to the reality of eternal life, as you walk with God, you get to a point where the Holy Spirit begins to be introduced to you. Not just as one who brought the life of God, but as God himself. He begins to lead you through a process. He does not just reveal power. You shall receive power after, after, after. God does not empower you when he's building you. He empowers you when he's sending you. So when you come to Jesus, stop looking for power. Come to me. It is the making that happens. Empowerment is at the point where you are being sent, not when you are made. Listen to me, because something is about to open up in your life. Believe me when I tell you this. Many of here, you here looking at me are men and women of God. Most of what we do in church is just some jamboree of being disciplined young men and women. Most of what we do in church is not, it's not the supernatural. It's just a manifestation of flesh from ill-cultured men and women of God. display of the flesh for the purpose of self-glorification that your life becomes a perpetual threat to darkness not because of what you are saying but because of what you are carrying what you are carrying first before what you are saying You will be amazed to know what is happening to people now from the realm of the spirit. All kinds of impartations. All kinds of liftings. This is not about Joshua Selman. This is every believer's heritage in Christ. But hear me, brothers and sisters. There is one thing I know. And this is why you came to church today. Listen to me. Somewhere in your Christian experience... When God is ready to begin to build you and announce you to the nations, he exposes you to different dimensions and different levels of graces. Now listen to my story. There was a time I have shared with you a few of my visions here. Just pay attention. I'm in this vision and I'm seeing an endless sea of people from the north to the south the east and the west and then these people begin to cry to me and say apostle there is no food and there is no water and then i said who is the cause and they were all pointing to me it was a whole generation i said me why would i be that wicked and they said you are the one and then i made up my mind that i was going to go but I had remembered in that vision that there were some people who were trying to bully me. They were trying to pursue me. That's what even took me to that room to be hiding. It was upstairs. I made up my mind that if I perish, 
I perish. But I have to save these people. As soon as I open the door, here stands this giant ancient man with beards. Now I know it was the Holy Spirit. But he stood there and he said, give me your hands. He said, we will walk together. My hands were so tiny in his hands. And yet he held me and we began to move. We began to move. Jumping from one level to the other. I've shared with you my encounters because you are about to receive something tonight. I was worshiping the Lord many years ago and I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and then the Lord speaks to me and says son from today I give you my presence as a gift I'm not sure I understood then what he was saying and then I see this huge being standing and he said from today he will walk with you I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence walk with you this is why you see some of these manifestations brothers and sisters everything God gives a man is meant for the body it's not the I told you the days of superstar Christianity is over we are too serious to just be glorifying flesh no the kingdom requires seriousness if you carry this mentality today brothers and sisters you go to a place where there are demon spirits it's impossible for that place to be quiet you don't have to be preaching just remember the ark has come blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Look at me. The next time they ask you, what is your contribution in this company? Tell them I bring the ark. What is your contribution in this business? There are five business partners. We don't know why you are here. Because intellectually, we don't think you have any relevance. Tell them, there is something that I bring. The ark. I bring to this company the presence of God. I bring to this home the presence of God. I bring to this ministry the presence of God. I bring to this relationship the presence of God. Hear me? Please look at me. Listen carefully. You know, we live in a world that likes to bully people based on all kinds of privileges. And it's easy to look at someone and say you've never flown abroad. You come from a village. You are so dull. You are so daft. And the believer stands full of the presence of God and looking weak, feeling inferior, feeling beggarly. I was teaching a school of ministry students. Oh, there is what you have as a believer. I agree you may not have had the privilege to go around the world. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior background. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior sociological orientation. Oh, but there is one thing you have. 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 The presence of God. The life that brings the supernatural. The life of the supernatural. He put it in you. As you move, God is moving. 
as you talk god is talking as you stretch your hands listen listen look at me we're going to pray do you know how arrogant it will sound for an ordinary human being to just suddenly believe that these are my hands you are seeing them what is special about these hands what suddenly makes you believe that these hands can heal without this revelation it is pride hands that you've been touching every day a life that you've been touching every day can i tell you this let no one see you as a disadvantage again you are not a minus to any system if you understand what i'm teaching you i have seen many many sick people healed in my life i have seen many people delivered when men give the credit to me i feel so embarrassed because they are not exactly right men who have understood this they have changed their society and changed territories carrying this gift of god to the nations next time you are going for a crusade you are not just carrying a salmon as that plane is flying you you are getting god to that region as soon as your feet steps on that ground expect things to happen men should be the last of the people you impact begin to impact the spiritual sphere you have arrived there by the power of the holy spirit supernatural changes begin to happen and you shift climates Thank you.